Salutations, welcome back to Colin's Last Stand right here on YouTube. My name is Colin Moriarty. So, this video is going live the day before July 4th. That would be July 3rd. And I wanted to take a moment to kind of celebrate the United States, but kind of from a different perspective. I think Americans, myself being one, have gotten beaten up a little bit in recent years, and I think in a lot of ways rightfully so. Our system, both to internalize and externalize, seems to be crumbling and falling apart a little bit. It's giving us bizarre outcomes, like with Donald Trump being president. And I think that, you know, we're all a little unaware or a little blissfully ignorant of some of the things that are going on that are causing these outcomes and are causing the sort of decay, both domestically and internationally, with America's standing, with the way people look at the country and the way people interact with the country and the way people, I think, glimpse what America's all about, this shining city on a hill kind of thing. And I think what we need to do on this 4th of July, both as Americans and for the third of my audience that is international, is to look at it through the lens of kind of grasping at those contradictions and those problems and embracing them and understanding that a lot of things that happen in America, like the rest of the world, are really two sides of the same coin, that we have some bad things and some good things. And sometimes when you put them together, I would argue that the, the good often outweighs the bad and that the United States, both to its own people and to the rest of the world, has been a net positive in its existence for nearly 250 years. But before I get into all of that, I do want to you know, say out there to the Americans that watch the show, which is a majority of the audience, that I hope you have a very healthy and happy 4th of July, that you stay safe, that you eat lots of good food, drink a lot of good beer, play with some fireworks safely, of course, and really celebrate what this country is all about, this great land is all about. Because I think that even in these trying times, when we're questioning our own sanity, when we're questioning our own national identity, we have a great deal to be proud of. And it's in those contradictions that I think we can find some forms of pride, as well as some forms of things that we need to improve upon as we get to the next 4th of July, and so on and so forth. Our own founding is a core contradiction. When Thomas Jefferson wrote that all men are created equal, Thomas Jefferson owned slaves back at his plantation in Monticello. We knew immediately that there was something up with this. By the way, the founders knew this as well. Founders identified that contradiction. It's not like they were all blissfully ignorant. And that went again in the 1780s, in the late 1780s, when the Constitution was written by James Madison and company. They knew that that contradiction there existed. And in my mind, we've made a society that's the marvel of the world. Look at the American Revolution itself, something that is contradictory and something that is confusing. The American Revolution is one of the most significant, important, influential moments of the last 300 years of human history and has caused and influenced a ton of revolutions, starting with the French Revolution, which then caused the Haitian Revolution. You had the Irish Uprising in 1798 that was directly influenced by the American Revolution and on and on and on and on. But a lot of those were bottom-up revolutions. The American Revolution was a top-down revolution, a very unique thing, fought by the men in the colonies that had the most to lose, that were the richest, that were the most educated. This is unusual, but it's something that we've embraced. In a society that has all sorts of religions and all sorts of creeds and cultures, we've actually deified not God or gods, but the men who founded the country. Some of the most famous Americans of all time, some of the most iconic Americans of all time, whether we talk about Martin Luther King Jr. or Harry Tubman or Malcolm X or Frederick Douglass, these were dedicated men and women that work towards the liberation of and the freedom for African Americans. We export their words, their images, their amazing quotes and their ideas, yet they wouldn't have even been necessary if the United States and the American society at the time, and still indeed to this day in many ways, was equitable. It's another contradiction. The American population is often looked at as insular and inward looking. We had a great advantage back in the day, and I think still to this day, by having these massive oceanic buffers between us and much of the rest of the civilized world. So we grew our own little culture here, and we often look at it, as I think many cultures do, frankly, as being better or superior to other cultures. But it's not like that doesn't contradict with the fact that we not only house the United Nations here in the United States in New York City, but that we pay a significant portion of the UN's bills. The U.S. pays more for the budget of the U.N. than 176 other countries combined. And actually, that number turns into 185 countries when we're talking about the peacekeeping military budget. Yet, another contradiction exists there as well. Many Americans don't even want the United States to be in the U.N. or the U.N. obviously to be in the U.S. Yet, there it is, another sign of this push and pull that defines the United States and something that I think we as Americans should embrace because that's who we are. 
The NATO alliance exists primarily and ostensibly as a shield to 29 member countries, an attack against one is an attack against all, which is something that flies into the face of the, of the advice of the very first presidential administration that warned us against entangling alliances. Yet the United States is a proud member of NATO, even against the founding principles, and we pay a quarter of NATO's budget to boot. America has this unrivaled anti-taxation sentiment flowing through its veins. We fought, as I said, a revolution against taxation forged in many ways forward by rich people that didn't want to pay taxes. There's no doubt about that. Yet we are also the most charitable and giving people in the world. Americans fork over their money without having to be taxed in sums and at rates far higher than the rest of the civilized world, even though we don't want to pay taxes. Look at that. Another strange contradiction. Americans are often derided as being a stupid people and ignorant and arrogant and uneducated people. And in lots of ways, that's absolutely true. Yet the collegiate system in the United States is the marvel of the world and is an order of magnitude more superior than any other collegiate system in the world. People fall all over themselves to get educated in the United States, which is a strange thing. Our public education at the secondary level is failing, yet our collegiate system is excelling and is educating some of the smartest people in the entire world. Indeed, apart from some small homogenous, centralized and socialized nations, the United States is by far the most educated nation on the entire planet. You wouldn't know that, of course, by the way some of us act. Americans are amongst the fattest people in the world, some of the most unhealthy people in the world, especially because we are so wealthy as a country and as a population, and especially because we should expect better outcomes, which we do not get from our for-profit healthcare system, which is the bane not only of the world, but really of many of us as well. I personally don't have a principled argument for universal health care, but I understand the problem and I'm open-minded to some solutions. But nonetheless, this is often thrown at Americans and I think rightfully so. Our health care system is totally broken. But there's a contradiction here too. The United States houses some of the finest hospitals in the world, exports tons of great doctors, founds much of the world's medicine with its pharmaceutical companies. America is looked at as nascent and Americans looked at as culturalist. We are not old like European countries or like some East Asian countries. We're a young nation, and so we're looked at as if we have nothing to contribute to the world, that our culture isn't something worthwhile or something that's, that's worth anything. But actually, our culture is technology and entertainment, and the world eats up and relies on our culture. American inventions and technology, indeed, are at the very core of the way the world works and interacts with one another, from the personal computer, an American invention, to the cell phone, an American invention, to the internet itself, an American invention. American companies like Apple, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Uber, Netflix, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat dominate people's lives all over the world, all the while we're told we export nothing of use. We're looked at as tasteless and backwards rubes as the world gobbles up our movies and our television shows and our music and our food and our fashion. America is often looked at as an out of control violent society full of guns and anger and all sorts of things and aggression. And yes, the United States has the world's biggest military, a military I think that is far too big, far too expensive, far too bloated. I think a lot of Americans agree with that. And of course, the United States has gotten involved in some terrible things and is responsible for many thousands, tens of thousands, perhaps hundreds of thousands of deaths all over the world, completely innocent, only in the last 100 years. There's no doubt about that. It's a terrible thing and a terrible history that much like slavery, we should have some shame about. But the American military and the American fighting force has also been there for people when they needed us the most. We did help liberate the world from pure evil not too long ago, and we're a central player in that. And we've put our fortune and our lives on the line many times for no benefit to ourselves and for the benefit of others. It can be both ways because as you're realizing throughout this video, it is two sides of the same coin over and over again. Hell, we invented the nuclear bomb and are the only country to ever use it in combat. And what's so ironic about that in terms of contradictions, in terms of this push and pull, is that using that nuclear bomb while terrible likely saved us maybe a million lives in American lives and many millions of Japanese lives. Again, strange contradictions. We're told that we as a people are racist and bigoted and hyper-nationalist and we don't want outsiders in our country. And a lot of people in the United States are like that, but not all of us. And I would say not even close to being a majority of us. In fact, for more than 200 years, people have been falling all over themselves to get into the United States. And we still allow to this day about a million new legal immigrants every single year to the United States. This is in addition to maybe 12 or 15 million illegal immigrants in the United States that have no right to be here, absolutely no legal right to be here, that would be thrown out by force in many other countries in the world, including many major countries, including many first world countries. Hell, perhaps 10% of the American population right now are legal immigrants to the United States that were not born here. 
And many of us, in fact, all of us are sons and daughters of immigrants. My family, the Moriarty's, came over from Ireland in the 1850s, and the Italian side of my family didn't come over until decades later, in the 1920s and 1930s. None of us are above it. None of us are above the immigrant fray because we all come from it. The United States has only 4% of the world's population, yet has a quarter of its entire wealth, and we're looked at as a very inequitable and unfair society that has a major lower middle class and poor underclass. And that's true, a lot of people are really struggling in the United States. There are a lot of people that are really struggling to make ends meet and things aren't getting easier. Inflation is going up, cost of living is going up, wages have remained stagnant when compared to those things. There's no doubt about any of that. But what you wouldn't know by reading the news is that in fact, even the American poor are living better than a vast majority of people in the entire world. And actually, the American poor are actually living better than some middle class people in other first world countries. So again, two sides of the same coin. Not saying you wanna be poor in the United States, I'm not saying you wanna be poor anywhere. What I'm saying is no one's dying of starvation in the street in the United States, and no one is without a safety net that will help them if they really and truly need it. These are all contradictions. We are a population in a country of them. And I think that's what we should spend this 4th of July celebrating, is that we're not perfect. We are far from perfect in the United States. We have never been perfect, we've strived to get there, but we are constantly stumbling, constantly making mistakes, and sometimes the mistakes are terrible. But look at all of the good things we've given to the world as well. Look at all of the inventions and technology and people we've exported into the world that have helped everyone and enriched everyone's lives. The very form of government that we have, our very revolution, was an inspirational thing to the rest of the world. And I'd like to think that even today in 2017, many years removed from those glory days, that we still have some inspiration left in us to give to the rest of the world. Maybe I'm different than some Americans because I don't look at the rest of the world with suspecting eyes and I don't look at the rest of the world and look down on them like some Americans do. But at the same time, I'm on the internet, I know people, I read and write and, and look at things and watch videos and, and see all of the things that people say about us too and look down on us. I think we need to find our shared humanity as a global population. And while the 4th of July is our holiday and our American holiday, I'd like to think that part of it is the world's holiday as well because Without the United States, I think the world would look much different, and I hate to tell you, it wouldn't look as good. So today's not only a day of pride for Americans, but I hope pride for the entire world. Because many of us here in the United States, we like the rest of the world. We don't only like ourselves, and we like having this relationship with everyone else as well. And in these trying times of Donald Trump, and in these trying times of a divisive government, and a media that you can't trust, and all these kinds of things going on, and the circular firing squad that's constantly happening both in our borders and outside of our borders, I'd like to think that today should be a call for unity or this particular holiday, July 4th, regardless of when you're watching this video, should be a call for unity. A call to understand that everyone, every society, every country, every person is a, 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 is a contradiction, a walking contradiction in their own way. And I, for one, am a super proud, devout American, and I'm not ashamed of that at all. So happy birthday, United States. And again, I wish all of you out there a very happy and healthy 4th of July. I hope you really enjoy yourselves and stay safe and really, really get the most out of that day off that so many people get, and kind of just take a moment to remember what it's all about. It's all about those perfections and imperfections, and I hope we continue to embrace that. Anyway, that's it for this episode of Colin's Last Stand. I hope you enjoyed it, and I really appreciate your time. Remember, you can always thumb up the video if you like it and thumb it down if you don't. I hope you take the time to share it with your friends and family. Leave comments down there. I'm often down in the comments talking to you guys, as you know. Subscribe. Join us on Reddit. Join us on Facebook. Join us all over the place. Uh, Colin's Last Stand can be found all over the place. And again, Colin's Last Stand is completely ad-free and independent, so I hope that you choose to go to Patreon.com to give me $1, $5, $10, whatever you can every month to help support this independent historical and political venture. So thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you. Go America. Keep on learning.